Hey there, Andy here. If it's your first time getting into Hobby CNC, you might be a little intimidated on what you need to get started. This video is designed to cover everything you need to know to have in your shop. Your first and largest purchase is gonna be the machine itself. The long mill benchtop CNC is a capable option for hobbyists who are looking for a lot of functionality found on more expensive machines, but on a more budget friendly package. Depending on the size, you can get a long mill for around $1,800 to $2,300 Canadian or around $1,400 to $2,000 USD, which makes it one of the least expensive options for the size. While there are cheaper and more expensive options out there, we believe that this specific machine is best for hobby use, but can also be used for light production and business use. Not only that, the long mill also comes with high quality support and resources. Every long mill comes with the mechanics, electronics, and hardware to set the machine up in either one or two boxes. The main difference between the 12x30, 30, 30x30, 30 30, and 48x30 sizes are in the length of the rails that determine what the working area of the machine is. Because the rest of the machine is the same, you can upgrade and change the size of your machine by changing the length of the rails and, some of, and the lead screws. The base long wheel kit does not come with a router, since we wanted to let customers choose which router they wanted to use with their machine. The long wheel can work with several different palm routers, but the one that we recommend is the popular Makita RT0701, as it's inexpensive, readily available, and has more than enough power for general woodworking. You can order one directly through us or at most hardware stores. The long mill can also be retrofitted with an aftermarket spindle, and we provide 71 and 80 millimeter router mounts for larger spindles. However, due to the cost and complexity, we only recommend this upgrade to experienced customers. The Makita router can be purchased for about 120 US dollars or about 165 Canadian dollars. You'll also need to get some end mills and bits to start off your CNC journey. Assuming you have a Makita router, you'll mostly be using quarter inch shank tools, or if you get either the quarter inch to eighth inch adapter or the eighth inch precision collet, eighth inch shank tooling as well. We provide dozens of different bits, options, and packs on our store. If you're not sure what to get, we recommend checking out one of the end mill sets, such as the sign breaker set and the machinist set. If you're starting out for the first time, I recommend getting the starter end mill set, which comes with all the bits that you think we think you'll need and a collet adapter. The starter bit set comes with one quarter inch flat upcut end mill, three eighth inch flat upcut end mills, two eighth inch single flute upcut end mills, one 60 degree V bit, one 22, de 22 millimeter surfacing bit, and a quarter inch to eighth inch collet adapter. Prices for bits can vary a lot, especially when you get into high-end tools, but for the average user, you should expect to pay around a couple dollars for smaller tooling and about $20 for larger bits. The starter end mill set, which we recommend for first-time users, are about $45 US or $60 Canadian and come with nine different bits and accessories. You will need to provide your own computer, such as a laptop or desktop to run the software. We have a full guide for system requirements in our resources section. However, most macOS or Windows computers less than five years old should generally work. You may have different requirements depending on the CAM or other programs you may choose to use. There are two main pieces of software that you need with your CNC machine. First is a G-code sender, and the second is CAM software. For G-code sending software, we created G-Sender specifically for the long mill. This program lets you send jobs, change settings, control your machine, and integrate accessories such as a touch plate and inductive sensors. Best of all, it's completely free. There are other G-code sending software such as UGS and Open Builds Control, but we think you should use G-Sender. Next, you'll need CAM software. There are several free options such as Easel and Carbide Create, which I recommend trying out in the beginning. However, if you have a little more cash to spend, Vectric VCarve Pro for about 699 US dollars or 896 Canadian is just about the best CAM software for CNC routers you can get. I recommend checking out our resources where we talk about different CNC software or checking out our video on software on YouTube to help you choose which software you should get. The last thing that you need to get for your CNC machine is a bench and spoil board. This is just a large surface that you can mount your machine on. It should be noted that 
the, the surface should be as flat and strong as possible, since any flex or irregularity may show up in your cuts. Some people make a bench from scratch, or they can use a sturdy desk or dining room table as well. You also need a spoil board or waste board, which acts as a consumable surface for your projects to sit on. We recommend three quarter inch MDF as it's cheap, readily available, and dimensionally stable. You should be able to buy a four by eight sheet and cutting into two to three waste boards for about $60. We've now covered all of the basic items you need to get for CNCing. With all the things we discussed above, you can make just about any project you want. However, we also have different accessories and tools you may want to get to improve your experience. CNCing can be really messy, which makes dust collection an important part of your setup. At our shop, we use a rigid shop vac and dust deputy, both of which you can purchase for about $200. This sort of setup will be more than capable for any hobby CNC dust collection use. To help clean up dust while cutting, we also have the dust shoe, a $60 US or 75 Canadian attachment, which goes on the front of the machine to suck up dust while your job is cutting. The Mark II magnetic dust shoe comes with a 2.5 inch attachment, so it will work with the rigid vac perfectly and most other shop vacs as well. To keep parts from flying out when cutting, you'll need some form of work holding. Certain methods, such as screws and hot glue, are very inexpensive and are easy to use. Some users will set up a T-track table on their wasteboard, which allows you to use key clamps and quarter inch bolts to have a fast and adjustable system for work holding. A full set from us costs about 100 US dollars or 125 dollars Canadian. I should note, what makes our T-Tracks unique is that they use quarter inch by 20 bolts rather than T-bolts, which are harder to find, so that you can buy different size bolts from your hardware store if you want to make your own T-clamps. There are a lot of work holding options, so I recommend checking out our resources page and checking out all the different options that you can use. The last part we're going to talk about is the touch plate and inductive sensors. When starting your job, the long mill needs us to have a set origin point. You must choose a starting point for the machine to start from, and it'll perform the movements sent by the computer from that point in relation to the starting point. The important thing is in setting the starting point. You can choose to start the point manually by just jogging the machine to the point you want to start from and zeroing the machine, but we've created a touch plate to semi-automate the process. Currently, we have a simple touch plate for about $30 and a more advanced auto zero touch plate for about $100. Additionally, you can add limit or homing switches to your machine. These are sensors that are set up at specific corners of your machine so that you can return the machine to a specific point over and over again. For the long mill, when you shut off your machine, it does not remember the specific position relative to itself. And so by having a specific homing position to return to, you can use this reference position of the machine automatically. For example, if you want to set up a job in the same position over and over again, you can home your machine and find the origin point of that part in relation to the home position after you shut your machine off. You can get an inductive sensor kit for about $50 to $60 from our store. However, we generally recommend this to only advanced users since the setup and process for using it can be complicated. We generally recommend this to users who are already familiar with their CNC machine and how to use it, so that if they run into an issue, they can troubleshoot it and separate them between the machine issue and the homing sensor issues. Although we won't get into too much detail in this video about our other add-ons, the long mill is also compatible with other accessories such as the Vortex rotary axis and laser beam add-ons that can provide additional functionality. For a full list of add-ons and accessories you can get with your long mill, make sure to check out our add-on section in our store. Because the what should I get with my machine question is one of the most asked questions we get at CNC Labs, we've come up with the long mill Mark II beginner's kit. This kit includes your choice of long mill, either the 30 by 30 or the 48 by 30, the router, dust shoe, auto zero touch plate, and end mill starter set. And of course, our amazing G-Code software and lifetime technical support. 
We've chosen these items since these are the items that most of the people that order from us get with their machine. And we felt like these were the most relevant options to have when first getting started. Additionally, because we can pre-pack machines in advance, it speeds up production so that we can fulfill machine orders faster. For more information about the beginner's kit, make sure to check out the link in the description. We hope that this video helps you understand and budget everything you need for starting your CNC journey. If you're looking for inspiration for your first CNC setup and want to see what other people have been doing, I strongly suggest checking out our community forum and Facebook group. Links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy making.